a great point you've just made. I'll read one of the longest, most boring books in English history because you were like, nuh uh. Yep. <laughs> I wish that worked for other books, right? I know that happens all the time in the Christian movies review, but I wish I could just be like, oh, and you haven't even read Proust's three book series on a memory, on a rumination of one's own sexuality and the relationships that represents. And everyone was just like, fine, fine. And then Mond, I don't want to wait. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they said there would be cake. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath is still on vacation, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Live Christmas Tacular in New York City! All right, yeah, no, was that 13 seconds in. That's a new record. But yes, we are doing a live God Awful Movies Christmas Tacular, whatever the fuck that means, in New York City on December 17th. Hurry, 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 hurry. Well, actually, hurry, yes, hurry. in this case, absolutely. This theater's a bit smaller than the ones that we usually book, and we're only going to be doing the one show. So if you or a GAM fan who's hard to shop for during the holidays are going to need a ticket, you want to get them now. They're going to sell out quickly. GodAwfulMoviesLive.com. That's right. You can get your tickets at GodAwfulMoviesLive.com or check the show notes. Anyway, as I was saying before all of that, sitting 4,100 miles to my later and Sitting patiently through Eli's hijacking of the intro is the host of Be Reasonable, <laughs> co-host of Skeptics with a K, project director for the Good Thinking Society and editor of the Skeptic UK, Michael Marshall Marsh. Welcome back, sir. It's a pleasure to be here. And you know what? I don't mind sitting patiently through Eli hijacking the intro because it turns out sitting patiently through things I'm hating is something I'm getting a lot of practice <laughs> at at the moment. Right. Oh, speaking of which, uh, where exactly in the queue to see the Queen's dead body are you right now? <laughs> How many hours? I'm about 16 hours away from seeing her, but that's lucky because I started queuing just before she died, like a couple of hours before she died. I thought, you know what? I'm going to start queuing at Westminster. I've got a feeling something's about to go down. Reasonable, reasonable, which means, you know, I've, I've, I've barely had to piss myself while waiting for her. Oh, so, you well, know, there you I've, go. I've had it easy. Very civilized. I think it's weird that Charles is walking up and down the line, scolding people, uh, telling him how long he waited for her to die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am in the weird position where I know for a fact that the king of my country hates me because I, I know oh, Charles yeah. has seen some of the stuff I've said and done about him oh. and his, his advocacy for homeopathy. So yeah, I, I know that the monarch hates me. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. Hated by the king. That's, that's, yeah, that's someone, a pretty cool notch yeah, to that's have. Yeah, that's like on. a 200-year-old <laughs> status. Yeah. <laughs> and he's my brother in the art of magic because we're both part of the magic circle. So. Oh, wow. Really? Nice. Watch your P's and Q's, Marsh. <laughs> All right, so moving back to the God Awful Movie Show we're doing here. Uh, tell us, Marsh, what will we be breaking down today? Oh, so we watched Crossfire, which is the 1979 story of the Puerto Rican liberation movement as viewed through the only lens and perspective that actually matters, a white blonde girl from Missouri. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. on vacation. Mm. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you're struggling with the age-old question... Who's worse, terrorists or missionaries? You will love this movie. Look, I'm not saying I picked this movie for the week after 9-11 on purpose, but sometimes these things just work themselves out. Fair. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I want to say best worst superfluous restaurant scene, which... We're going to have to get to it because it constitutes a sizable percentage of the runtime of this movie. But <laughs> our main characters visit a restaurant and then we watch them eat to music for a disconcertingly long time. So long that I started to think, am I just watching an ad for this restaurant that happened right? to have a weird terrorist <laughs> subplot? <laughs> yeah, in, in a movie filled with superfluous scenes, this scene seemed superfluous. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tease you with one best worst Bible reading scene, Ooh. right? In almost every movie we've ever watched, there is a scene usually right at the end of the second or beginning of the third act where one character reads a Bible and has a change of heart. This movie, I believe, is the worst it's ever been done and the best it's ever been done. 
Interest. That's a tease indeed. And I'm going to take a sort of strange angle here. I'm going to go with best worst identical movie at 1.5 speed. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So if I can part the curtain here, you know, I usually watch the movies once. Occasionally I'll get to watch them twice. But on that second watch through, I'll watch it at 1.5, sometimes 2x speed. What I realized in having the time to do a 1.5 watch through because this movie is relatively short is that it is truly an identical movie at mm. 1.5 speed. It's just a little like the pacing is the same. The scenes are the same because there's so little talking and everything's done in montages and people in the 1970s apparently walked at three quarters speed. <laughs> it looks exactly <laughs> like I was watching it at regular speed. I cannot communicate how many times I was watching this at 1.5 and I clicked the thing to be like, oh, it must have turned off and gone back. Nope, that is 1.5 speed. Right. Well, so for me, I actually, I, I almost wrote the exact same best worst then I had to leave it out because you'd already written yours in. But for me, it was that I kept like hitting the skip forward five seconds and it was the same scene. Right. Like, <laughs> like, the, like the restaurant scene, for example, is just like, well, they're still eating that. Se- that well, they haven't even moved on to dessert yet. My God. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're about to watch a movie where colonialism is the hero. So I think everybody needs a break to ease themselves into that. But we're going to be back in a flash with all the enigmatic montages that are Crossfire. Yeah, we're basically watching this out of respect for the Queen. Colonialism is that much of a hero. <laughs> Lizzie would have loved this one. <laughs> Hi, I'm No Illusions. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know... We probably shouldn't say whether we have a favorite advertiser on this show. And if we did, we should probably say it's some, you know, great cause like online therapy or badly named shoes that help the environment. But I can't lie to you, podcast listener. My favorite sponsor of our podcast is Trade Coffee. But Eli, what's Trade Coffee? It's a coffee subscription service unlike anything you've ever tried before because they partner with top independent roasters to freshly roast and send the best coffees in the country direct to your home on your preferred schedule. But far more importantly, when they became a sponsor, they gave me a free account. So so wait, that's why they're your favorite sponsor because they gave you free coffee? Oh, 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 no, Noah. It's far more than that. You see, they also created a special collection just for me and Heath. Seriously? Seriously? That's right. Heath and I worked with the team at Trade to create the new God Awful Movies Collection. It's a selection of our favorite dark roasts that we've gotten from Trade, so you can wake up to the exact cup of Morning Joe as us, down to the very bean. All right, Eli, but what if I don't like what you've chosen? Then fuck you, Marsh. Nope. Nope, Eli. I mean, and if what I got isn't up your alley, don't worry. Trade will have whatever it is you want. You can shop their most popular coffees by roast or flavor profile, or you can take their coffee quiz and get expertly matched with coffees you'll love. All right, Eli, where do I give it a try? If you want to support small businesses and brew the best cup of coffee you've ever made at home, it's time to try Trade Coffee. Right now, Trade is offering our listeners a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping at drinktrade.com slash awful. That's drinktrade.com slash awful for $30 off your subscription to the best coffees in the country. And I should know, because I picked them. Trade, my favorite sponsor who I love the most. Okay. Okay. And I said to her, look, if you want to vote, that's one thing, but I'm not acknowledging AIDS until the president does. Oh, well, good for you. Hey, hey, guys, thanks so much for coming. Oh, no no problem, Mitch. So what's your big movie idea? Right, uh, right, straight to the punch. Well, it's a love story, right? That This girl's in, oh, Mexico, Guatemala, I, I don't know, it's somewhere Spanish, and, and she meets this guy. Right, you mean she, he forced himself into a car and then she, he demands that she dates him, right? Yeah. Well, ex- exactly, classic B Q. But yeah, yeah. But then she she finds out that he's a terrorist. Oh, I hate when that happens. So they get into a big fight. Classic woman behavior. Right? Yeah. And so she starts to fall for this other guy instead, but she doesn't know how to choose. Sorry, she she doesn't know whether or not to choose the terrorist. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that seems pretty obvious to me. Come on. Yeah. I mean, why would she not go for the guy who wasn't a terrorist? Well, the other fella is a missionary. Oh, that is tricky. You see? Is he he hot at least? He looks like Bob Ross. Ah, tricky. Oh, no. Well, for me, that wouldn't be at all. Really? You guys don't want to fuck Bob Ross? I do not want to fuck Bob Ross. Bob Ross, the painting guy. I like a man who knows how to soothe. Be some good ASMR stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Dan, we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open things up on a little old-timey bomb assembly, right? <laughs> and it's so fucking stupid because they have, like, the ticking sound in the background as we look at this giant alarm clock that he's winding, but he's winding it. <laughs> like, what the fuck would be ticking? Right, and the thing is, it's not even like a giant alarm clock. It looks like he's using a wall clock. Like, yes. I have that on my wall <laughs> as, a, like, a feature for the room. It's so huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It does seem weird that he has to use the whole clock. You feel like you could at least cut off the giant bells at the top, right? There's, <laughs> there's got to be some fat to trim in this clock. And the thing about the fact that it's literally ticking, like, surely this is the fuse, right? So why is it ticking? Is it counting down while he's making? Is he just like a jaded right. terrorist who needs to work against the, a live fuse in order to still feel anything? <laughs> so also he's like he's like really waffling on the time for a second as he's setting it. He's just like, yeah, I think I'll. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little more exciting for myself here. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm so mad at how long it takes this dude to set his fucking bomb. He's just like, oh wait, the big hand is for the minutes. And the little hand is I'm I'm glad we didn't get the three handed ones. Those are confusing. I know the second hand's always moving, but it's just confusing to me. So. We do watch him make this bomb for so long, but I, I started to worry that this was an instructional movie on how to make a bomb. And yeah. I thought, did, did Andrew definitely sign this one off? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so he builds the bomb. We get the title, Crossfire. Yeah, Crossfire, the thing you don't get with a bomb. Yeah, yeah right, yep. right. Famously, there are no guns in this movie. I almost went with best worst title. <laughs> right? Well, especially because it makes it so hard to Google. There are 4,000 things called Crossfire, yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. There's one of them that rates really highly on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, and that really threw me. Wow, <laughs> 97%. That really? Really? <laughs> so, but not this one, no. No, no, no. So he sets out to do a little bombing. The music is pretty sure he's going to fuck that bomb, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's just say the music throughout this movie is always sure a porn is starting. And based on the acting, I don't blame the music. Yeah, no, that's fair. I guess maybe in the 70s, just all the music fucked. It might just be that. But anyway, so he takes his bomb to some kind of well-guarded place of some sort or whatever. Is it well guarded? Is it really well, that well guarded? Because he, he walks up, he puts his bomb down immediately next to the gate to this well guarded place. And the guard looks at him and goes like, yeah, nothing to see here. Absolutely <laughs> fine. Like, if the guard's job isn't stopping strange men putting suitcases down near the building, what is the guard's job? <laughs> Just setting down my case. Hello. Do you like not being blown up? <laughs> That's cool. Then bye forever. <laughs> so, Marsh, they, they had see something and they had say something back then. They just hadn't put it together yet. It would take another yeah. couple of decades. <laughs> and then, and I, I just have to point this out, he walks away and we cut to the briefcase for so <laughs> long I swore it was going to have a line. Right. <laughs> right. I thought the briefcase was going to be like, here I go, blowing up again. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, he wanders off and then he stops to ask this blonde lady, this is Shelly, what time it is, right? Oh, and it's so good that he asked me the time. I'm going to be like, yeah, do you have the time? Because currently all my clocks are currently part of a comically oversized bomb. So yes. I have no way of telling the time anymore. <laughs> and she gives the weirdly specific answer, right? She's like, it's 3.02, right? Like she knew that he needed to know the time for bomb detonation purposes. <laughs> but wasn't the bomb going to go off at half past one? <laughs> I thought he set the bomb to 1.30. He's like, oh God, no, it's 3.02. That means the bomb's going to go off in... 10 hours and yes. 20 minutes. Oh. Let's get out of here. <laughs> And and what's amazing is, right, it's very obvious. First of all, I want to go through him planning this, right, where they were like, great, so you'll make a whole suitcase bomb, you'll plant it in front of an embassy or whatever, and then you'll just jazzercise your way into a car? Yeah, no, that's my way. Yes! In a beautiful powder blue suit, a beautiful powder uh, blue three-piece suit. It's it's sharp. That suit fucks too, yeah. Oh, right. 100%. <laughs> so yeah, so he, he asks her what time it is. She's getting into her car and he's like, hey, why don't you give me a ride somewhere? And she's like, no. And he's like, I'm going to get in your car anyway. So either it's a rude hitchhiker or a polite carjacker. I haven't decided yet. Yeah, I've never seen someone bundled into their own car, into the driving <laughs> seat of their own car. Yeah. yeah. And again, he's trying to do like all this weird sexually aggressive slash pushy stuff in fast motion. So he's like, hey, what is a lovely lady? You know what? We actually don't have time for this. Get in the fucking car. Just start driving. Start driving. <laughs> and keep in mind that for the movie, this is a meet cute. Yep. Right. Mm. This is a meat cute. Yes, they they have. Well, it's 1979. I guess this is how you know. This is how you met a lady back then. You would hit her on the head, drag her back to your cave, whatever it was. So yeah. So they drive off, 
and there's an explosion sound in the background. She's like, what was that? You think he's like, I bet it's hats. Construction. <laughs> he goes, construction. And she's like, well, oh, yeah, I bet they use bombs for construction. Yeah, probably going through a mountain here in town. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she may have been confused because the sound effect was much more ten pin bowling than suitcase. Okay, bomb. yeah, that's no, quite no, got that's the fair. soundscape right. <laughs> so, yeah, which they also don't use in construction, by the way. As it turns out, <laughs> that's fine. So he's like, "Hey, turn into this terrifying alley," and she's like, "Yeah, sure, okay." And then she says, "They drive into this kind of slummy neighborhood," and she goes, "What is this called?" And it was like a neighborhood. What? What do you? fucking talking about what is it called and again the soundscape here is very much like primary school playground you can hear children just playing games loudly in the background like they're just like driven straight into the middle of a playground at the school <laughs> right and he tells us it's his barrio and then we get these ominous cuts around to people very clearly just living their lives but it's 1979 so we're supposed to be like brown people oh no yeah right <laughs> everywhere they're just hanging out of the windows yeah so she goes to drop him off. He's like, hey, do you want to come in? And she's like, oh, God, no. What the fuck are you even? <laughs> I'm I'm being carjacked, essentially. <laughs> this is where we learned his name is Paolo. That was also where we learned that her name is Shelly and that he'd like to take her to lunch to thank her for the ride. And she's like, no. And he's like, I'm going to be at your hotel. And she's like, you don't know what it is. He's like, it's such and such. And she's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Now I have to date and fall in love with you. Because he guessed where she was staying. Because yes. the thing is, she says as well, you know, like, well, you know, I'm not going to go for a date with you. I don't know you. And his response is, how are you going to find out? Look in the library. So, what? So, yeah, no, you can find me in the Dewey Decimal System under 363.325 for terrorism. Which, <laughs> in fairness, is the Dewey Decimal System coding for terrorism. Oh, I did look okay. that up for the purpose of that joke, yes. There was so little for him to research in this one. He's like, what is the Dewey Decimal System? <laughs> He's got Morse code for most of his notes at the end of yeah. the thing. <laughs> I also love the idea that, like, the only way to get to know someone is to date them right now exactly the way they tell you to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In 1979, so this was a meat cute and not the intro to a horror movie, which is what it would be in today. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. This movie is treating him like he's a scam rather than what we've seen, which is a sexually aggressive terrorist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. He's fresh off murders, right? This is how he <laughs> yeah. follows up murdering people at random. Yeah, he's got a he's got a fresh murder boner, and he's looking somewhere to plant it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish she wouldn't. Okay, so so she, so she drives off, and she asks she has to stop and ask some random person for directions, and then I just stopped and I basked in the glory of GPS as I remembered what a fucking nightmare some random person's directions were. Oh, oh god, yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Her attempt at Spanish is terrible as well. It's just, it's it's just the it's very much Brit abroad on the Costa del Sol kind of thing in Spain. It's just like, <laughs> look, if they don't understand you, just just say it slower and say it land you. They can understand. They're pretending they don't speak English. Look, everybody <laughs> speaks. Everybody speaks the Queen's English. Well, well they did until like, like a week ago. Right now, well, they the Kings. Them. Yeah, English again. <laughs> See, and I wrote in my notes. She's talking like how I imagine Marsh ordering at a Taco Bell sound. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> So, yeah, so she stops and she asks, hey, do you speak English? She's like, no, this guy does. So she hands him over to Bob Ross. Now, it's not really Bob Ross, but he looks enough like Bob Ross that what's the fucking difference? Yeah. Right? We never learn if he can paint. But, yeah, so she's like, do you speak English? And he's like, yeah, I'm from Nebraska, apparently, or something. And she's like, oh, great. And she asks for directions. He's like, oh, so you're a tourist. And she goes, how did you guess I was a tourist? <laughs> like, what the hell else would you be, lady? Yeah, not a lot of natives don't know the language of the country right, they yes, live in. Exactly. You just yeah. asked for directions to a fucking hotel. Yeah, exactly. Specifically to your hotel. It's pretty obvious at that point. Yeah. So, yeah. And so, and she goes, so what are you doing here? He goes, well, have you ever heard of Christianity? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, they opened for Earth, Wind and Fire last year. <laughs> I saw them somewhere. Like, look, he knows she's a tourist. She's not a tourist from Mars. So she right. has heard of Christianity. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's an exact quote, by the way. I'm not exaggerating what he says. He was like, yeah, man, I feel like I feel like she has. Also, so he gives directions, but he gives movie directions, right, where they don't really think it through or anything. And he's so, so it's like super vague. Oh, yeah. Right? He's like, you're going to go up here about three blocks or so. I'm like, I like more specificity in my direction. <laughs> We're three to 26 blocks, you know. <laughs> yeah. And then. I almost went with best worst Bible rejection when she's driving away. He's like, here, I have a Bible. And she goes, oh, no, no, I have one of those. It's um, it's next to my collection of signed hip hop CDs I got in <laughs> Times Square. I'm actually uh, 
Yeah. Good. All my copies of Big Issue that I bought, I'm all set. <laughs> and like, not to criticize the Christian missionary's tactics here, but he's handing her a copy of a Spanish language Bible, having first established she doesn't know Spanish. So really nailing this one. <laughs> so, okay. So then we, we cut to the, like the next day where she, apparently she went on that date with Paolo. <laughs> She went for a date with him. Why? Why is she hanging out with a terrorist who basically threatened to stalk her unless she saw him? <laughs> uh, t- yeah, when well, 1970s, man, I guess. So yeah, so and and we have this like I guess it's supposed to be this little cute bit where she's like, "What's this?" and he's like, "It's a pina colada." But she, and she's like, "A pina colada? What?" <laughs> but it's so long. Yes, it's so <laughs> fucking long. It's so fucking insanely long. Podcast. Like, this movie's on YouTube. You should watch it only to watch these actors stare into each other's eyes, both thinking, "I can't possibly say the words pina colada again." <laughs> this movie can't possibly call on me to repeat these lines another time. Oh god, yeah, it's like that acting kind of uh, game that you have to play where you've got to say the same phrase but with different intonation, different meanings. So yes. you have an entire conversation with just the same phrase. <laughs> Pina colada? Mm-hmm. Pina colada. Pina colada. <laughs> Pina colada. <laughs> so yeah, but there's a older couple that's off on the other side of the restaurant. So he goes over to them and he's he's he tells them some kind of story, right? Gives them a shady story about how her parents just died and you remind me of them and we were wondering if we could buy your dinner like in Dumb and Dumber. And they're like, Why? Well, absolutely, you can buy our lunch. That'd be great. Well, thank you so very much. And and I'd just like to throw out there that if they had named this movie Dumb and Dumber, it would have made a lot more <laughs> sense fair. plot than Crossfire. <laughs> and I didn't know what scam he was trying to run here, but I thought, I hope he charges their meal to her hotel room. Like, yeah, he does bombs, but he also does like more low-key hijinks, terroristy stuff, just to like slightly <laughs> fuck with foreigners. Yes! <laughs> He does. The the subplot of this movie will be, oh, Pablo, you scamp. Yes. Committing minor theft wherever you go. It's very strange. Also, Noah, you'll know because you're an old person. What year did they end the policy of if someone nods at you across a restaurant, it's probably fine for them to pay your check? (laughs) (laughs) Actually, that's still in place. You'd be amazed. Oh, all right. Nice. So, yeah. And so now he goes back to the table mm. and they get their entree. Yes. And for the next, I'm going to say three minutes, we watch them eat that entree. Yes. Right. That, that we, we watch a montage of them eating that meal. <laughs> mm-hmm. Are you allowed to call it a montage? Because montages typically are like, time lapse, time passing. Is it even a montage if it takes longer than the actual event that it's depicting? Because <laughs> yeah. I timed this. I timed this. This is a 55 minute movie. This is my best worst. It's a 55 minute movie and 45 seconds of them of this movie is a music montage of them eating lasagna. That's 1.4% of the runtime of this entire movie is one shot of them eating one lasagna. And then the waiter comes along and asks if she wants dessert. And I wanted her to say yes. And then that be the rest of the film. <laughs> and it was just an ad for the fucking resort. <laughs> oh, okay. At one point here, he snaps at his waiter. I'm like, okay, I want you to explode now. You should. Yeah. Explode. <laughs> but yeah, then he does the whole thing. He's like, oh, and that couple over there is going to be paying for our check. And the waiter's like, I have no follow up questions. Yep. Nailed it. 1979. I saw that head nod. I know everything I need to know. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So then he takes her to a a jewelry store so he can steal her a bracelet, right? (laughs) He does the grossest thing people do where the person's like, how much is that? And she's like, oh, he's like, too expensive. We're leaving. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it's worse than that because she makes the lady in the shop get out all of the jewelry from the case before she asks how much it's what like it costs and like do that before you make her go get the keys then come back then unlock that case and get it all out and then you, the first question how much that cost oh no no thank you no put that back <laughs> right yeah uh-huh. not even a haggling situation but while yeah. the case was open paulo reached in and grabbed the bracelet so that was the the real scene was that he was stealing stuff yeah and then they get out of the store and he hands it to her and she goes like Oh, Paolo, you just stole a hundred dollars worth of jewelry for me, didn't you? Yeah. Aw. Like, what a naughty boy is what the movie wants us to think. Yeah, yes. He's one step away from like ruffling his hair, essentially. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. you scam. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> so, and then, okay, we get what we recognize in retrospect to be a montage of several different dates that the two of them go on. 
Oh. And by retrospect, Eli just noticed. <laughs> <laughs> this counts as retrospect, yeah. Yeah, that's true, that's true. <laughs> it did take me a while because the thing that threw me is that he changed his outfit in these shots. And I thought it was the same day because we see the day getting like progressively towards the end of the day. So I thought, okay, they've done the food and then they've gone to the shops and they've gone for a little walk on the beach and now it's sunset. But the thing that threw me was he keeps changing outfit. But then I thought, well, hang on, he was wearing that powder blue suit during the day and now he's wearing a full orange outfit at sunset. <laughs> Is Paolo a chameleon? Oh, there you go. He's trying to blend into his background. Yeah, well, you know, he's also constantly robbing places, so he needs to change disguises, too. <laughs> like, like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, no, I had written in my notes, I just, I, at first I assumed he had just stolen new outfits for him, but no, this is, this is a different day. I was really hoping we were going to get a montage of them stealing wherever they went, right? You know, Yeah, there you go. Oh, I'll never forget me and Anna's first date knocking over that liquor store. The way she pissed the whip to that clerk, I just knew. <laughs> I knew. Because then the next shot is them like flying a kite. Yes. And I thought, I really hope he stole that kite. I hope the <laughs> shot just like pans back and there's a crying kid in the background <laughs> next to a briefcase. That's oh, what I really want to see. Jesus Christ. Okay. But can I talk about my favorite part of this montage, right? Because it's all typical stuff. But then he appears to be introducing her to a parrot. Yes. <laughs> right. It like it feels like. <laughs> A meet my friend scene. He's like, yeah, no, this is one of my close friends. He's a parrot. Um, <laughs> introduce him to all the women I date. Yeah, and I was just writing, steal a parrot, steal a parrot. Please go, please steal a parrot. <laughs> if this movie had any balls, any commitment, he'd have a parrot on his shoulder in every scene from now on. For Thank the rest you. of the movie. Absolutely. So much better of a fucking movie. But yeah, they admire tropical birds. They fly kites. We see them romp in the surf together. A little splash fight happens here. Okay, can I just say this is the least realistic thing in the film? I would contend, I'm going to throw this out there, there has never been a happy, loving splash fight. Never. <laughs> There's no romantic couple in the history of time has anyone ever splashed another person with water and that second person gone, oh, what fun, I'm aroused. Well, yeah, so it, like, with the exception of when you're already in bathing suits, kind of, the, yes, exactly. There's never, never been a fully dressed person who got pushed into the water and was like, I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And we should point out, by the way, this is Four minutes, just shy of four minutes of the movie is this montage of them in different outfits, flying kites and meeting birds. It's a 55 minute movie. Yes. That's the, this is a decent chunk of what we're seeing in <laughs> what is later going to be an epic struggle for the freedom of a country amidst terrorism and missionaries. It's five minutes, basically, of them like, yeah, just here's a, here's a parrot yeah. <laughs> and, uh, at a beach, <laughs> a bit of food and ice cream. And also, their date montage eventually takes them to an abandoned readout. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Seems like a weird, like, not the most romantic spot on the beach in my mind. And they climb like a weird rope ladder into it. Yes. But the music still thinks this is part of their adorable date, but it's them sort of scaling an abandoned fort. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. All right, well, I'll tell you what, in a movie that's damn near all montage, you got to just insert breaks kind of randomly. So Paolo and Shelly are in love, and we've earned a break. But we'll be back in a minute with even more Crossfire. Okay, and then this one means you move the pawn. Ah, 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 okay, there has to be a lower setting on this. For the millionth time, no. Oh, hey, guys, what are you up to? Oh, we're just cheating at chess with anal beads. Yeah, Eli's going to be world champ. With, with anal beads. Yeah, Noah's going to buzz me the right answers. I mean, well, if you would stop yelping, I could. Well, excuse me for not practicing. Guys, guys, if you want to improve your chess skills, don't use anal beads, just use Masterclass. What's... Ah, ow! What's Masterclass? Ow. No fair, that's no fair, you cheated. With Masterclass, you can learn from the world's best minds, anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. You can learn how to skateboard from Tony Hawk, improve your communication skills from George Stephanopoulos, or even learn chess from Gary Kasparov. No anal beads required? I mean, there's no anal beads required. But with over 150 classes from a range of world-class instructors, that thing you've always wanted to do is, is closer than you think. It's true. Masterclass gave us a free membership when they became a sponsor, and I've been loving former FBI hostage negotiator Chris Voss's class on the art of negotiation. That's why I, No Illusions, personally endorse Masterclass. I highly recommend you check it out. You can get unlimited access to every class 
And as a God Awful Movies listener, you get 15% off an annual membership. So go to masterclass.com slash awful right now. That's masterclass.com slash awful for 15% off Masterclass. All right, Noah. Well, looks like we won't need these after all. I don't know. I, I might keep them just to keep you on your best behavior. Ah, wait. Oh, wait. No, I liked that last one. Okay, no, I saw that coming. Yeah, me too. Do it again. <laughs> All right, Roberto. Now, remember, we have to set these bombs to go off at 3.40 p.m. Got it. Oh, okay. Oh, we don't um, we don't have digital clocks for that. That wouldn't work with the with the bomb. We just we have to use these, but it'll be fine. It's fine. Right. Yeah, of course. Of course. So I um, I set it to the three. That's a small hand. And then. Oh, God. 30 is six, yeah. right? Because it's halfway. Yes. And, and nine is 45. Can, can you not tell time? No, I can. It's just the numbers are a little hard to translate in your head. You kind of have to be looking at it there. There we go. Great. All day. No, care. no, Roberto, that's 240. It needs to be after the three. Uh, okay. So do I move the the big hand around or do I do I move the small hand a bunch? Um, until no, the you, big you hand? move the small hand all the way around. Okay, right. Small hand around. We're going for 340? 40, yeah, 340. Right, which is the nine. No, Roberto. Great. Okay, so now you blew us up. Well, you know what? Next time, maybe spring for a fucking Timex. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. As you'll recall, we left off in the middle of a fucking protracted dating montage. <laughs> <laughs> which is going to resolve at the ruins of this old Spanish church where Shelly and Paolo are chatting. Yeah. He explains that this is his thinking place. Yes. Uh -huh. I feel like I just do that everywhere I go, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't mean to brag, you know. I, but <laughs> They have this, like, will he tell her or won't he thing, but it's the most insipid conversation ever. She goes, what do you have to think about? And he's like, stuff <laughs> well right because yeah. you know it's supposed to be this whole like all right well you know but now she has to learn the real truth about him but they've been in like six or seven different fucking outfits during this montage right like so they've been <laughs> dating for a while now so when she starts asking basic questions like so what do you do for a living it feels a little out of place <laughs> yeah what was she saying to him over the previous five outfit changes <laughs> what was their conversation <laughs> when, when, uh, in fairness that conversation, every one of those conversations was, was, where did you get that piece of jewelry? Where did you get that ice cream? Where did you get that parrot? It was just him yeah. stealing stuff and her asking where it came from, in fairness, yeah. Well, maybe it was that she kept asking him that. And he's like, you know what? I can't think in this place. I only have this one location <laughs> in which I can think. I, I won't be able to answer a question. Just constantly shitting himself. I have no rectal control out here. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a geographically located ability to say different things, though, because this is thinking place. <laughs> Of what do you do? And then his answer to that question does not take place in his thinking place. No. He takes her to like his neighborhood. But I love the idea that that conversation actually happened in real time. Because it sort of feels, first of all, she says, you know, what do you do? And they walk into the thinking place and then we skip like someone just pressed X to skip the cutscene because it just <laughs> ends up. But when we see him next, he's on the street and he answers the question. Right. And I genuinely hope he didn't say a single word to her until they got to the street. Like she said, what do you mean? You know, the things. And then he silently walks over the little rope ladder and silently goes down <laughs> it and silently walks across the beach and walks all the way to the slums. Then 45 minutes later, he starts to answer that question. <laughs> well, gets in the car. They drive 20 minutes to his favela. Yeah. yeah. No, so it's, it's, this is his thinking spot, but this is his talking spot. You see? <laughs> so. Yeah, but he, he takes her to this barrio and he's like, uh, see, look at all of these people in all their poverty. What I do for a living is I help these people. And she's like, can you be more specific? He's like, I help them. Help. <laughs> shush, help. Like, uh, Quiet. I'm doing my walk and talk through the neighborhood. Yeah, God, God damn it. <laughs> Some guy just stops him and thanks him. He's like, oh, hey, you help us. That's very nice of you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Yeah, they they find this little kid selling apples and she's like, oh, good, are you going to steal from him? And he's like, no, we only steal from white people. And I wrote in my notes, 
I mean, I don't not get yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, an, fair. that's a good policy. <laughs> that's fair. I love that she was totally down for robbing the eight-year-old otherwise, though. That was, that was yeah, pretty good. Right. That was pretty good. No, I thought we were just stealing. He's shit. pretty small. We could get <laughs> all of his apples, Pablo. Like, this is... Also, they, they do, and this, this is a, a thing I had to look up, but they do introduce, he sort of says, I want you to meet a good friend of mine, a little friend. And I thought that is very close, so close to say hello to my little friend. I had to look up whether this film came out before or after Scarface. It was before. This wasn't an M16 oh, he was yeah. about to introduce her to. <laughs> nope. Was- like we said earlier, Marsh was really, really desperate to do some research while watching this. <laughs> And in case anyone's wondering what scars and faces are in the Dewey Decimal System, so, I want to know some too. <laughs> so they wander on, and a little deeper into the neighborhood, they come across missionary Bob Ross on a loudspeaker, right? And yeah. and Paolo has exactly the same reaction to a street preacher as I do, and I'm not comfortable <laughs> with that. Oh, God, yeah, he's instantly irate at the Jesus preacher. And like, I mean, I don't not get it. Right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, now I just get so excited to talk to them. So it's a very different. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, I'm going to wreck his day. I'm going to wreck his day. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but he gives this speech where he's just like, these people come in here and they try to sedate the population with their bullshit religious platitudes and, and they cause more and more poverty. And I'm like. Mm, that's a good point actually that's i'll use that let me write that down next time i see a street preacher <laughs> we all very quickly forgot about all that robbery and got on team paolo here right like, i can't <laughs> be the only one I, I i forgave the bomb at that point it's like yes paolo <laughs> go for it look sometimes you get a bomb we did yeah, we've yeah. all done a little bombing here and there so yeah but so he's all angry and he's like hey do you really want me to tell you what I do for a living and she's like I mean we've walked all this fucking way now <laughs> <laughs> obviously I do he's like well I think it's time we went to my terrorist cell hideout oh you hate when a guy just brings his girlfriend to your terrorist cell without <laughs> asking everybody right well they do they do right so they they walk in everybody's yelling in Spanish we watch him yell in Spanish for a fucking eating montage length of time yeah, yeah. Uh, to be fair though i can confirm that this is what a room full of political activists yes. looks and sounds like so <laughs> <laughs> i mean the spanish one of the spanish-speaking ladies is just basically yelling who the fuck is this woman and why have you brought her here yes like, yeah she's absolutely right on that like can i second that is this lady on ho- holiday can I, yeah can, why is she even here i completely agree right yeah let, let, so we haven't really explored that question but what the fuck is she doing here she's been here six seven dates worth right long enough to fall in love with this guy and everything is she just on a european length holiday (laughs) yeah how long have we montaged for because either this lady's got very deep very quickly or she takes a lot of time off work she just like vacations in puerto rico for a long time (laughs) maybe she's an heiress of some sort i don't know who the (laughs) fuck even knows but yeah so his terrorist cell is all pissed because she brought he brought a an american in and while she's like, while they're yelling at each other in Spanish, she notices over off to the side. I don't know. I honestly, I cannot tell what the fuck she's looking. It's shot in a shadow, and the footage is old. But whatever it is, it freaks her out. It's so good, and I'm so excited to tell you. She notices that they have a newspaper that says "We are terrorists." Well, yeah, no, I saw the newspaper. Yeah, yeah. but she sees something else. So, like, I guess based on what she says later, I guess they're bomb parts. Yeah, it was either dynamite or a lot of sausages. Oh, yeah, no, she does. She gets a peek at the uh, dynamite room. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it could have been like, oh, these are people who keep like sausages just on a table. I want no part of this. Yeah, well, Nothing good fair. can come mm-hmm. of this. Yeah, nah, I'm just gonna get food safety matters to my family, <laughs> Pablo. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, but then she comes across the newspaper clippings that they've kept of all the terrorist attacks they've done, and she can't speak Spanish, but she can speak enough Spanish to to figure this out. So she's ready to go. She bails. I really wanted her not to get it right. And she's like, no terroristas. Destroy avec un bombo. <laughs> Maybe that's a band we should check out later. Anyway, so what do y'all do in your little club? <laughs> but instead, she just awkwardly backs out of the room while they're yelling. I got, I, you know what? I gotta uh, go for the thing by parking meter. by Yeah, she's like, look, I, I was only in this for the robbery, but if it's for like some sort of cause for like freedom for your people, I'm out. Mindless crime, not for a purpose. Come on. <laughs> it's the American way. Yeah. <laughs> but so she leaves and she says as she's leaving, 
I'll meet you at that bar later tonight. And I'm like, oh, that's that's smart. Make him think that you're going to. But no, she goes to that bar. And she does. Just, She's like, I, I, I'm I, into you being a terrorist, just not with a whole big group of terrorists, I guess. I don't. You didn't tell me there were women there. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so we cut her to her drunk at this bar. She's all shit faced. And there's another guy buying her drinks now, right? He's like, Hey, you, you get you, you, uh, for a montage. <laughs> and I, I really hope this meant that she's been picked up by some other random local character. And then we went on that journey as well. And she just makes her way around Puerto Rico, finding out their life stories. <laughs> That'd have been charming. It would have been charming. Yeah. No, uh, but then Paolo comes in and he's like, Hey, stop buying her drinks. I'm going to ply her with alcohol, right? <laughs> And the guy she's been talking to at this point just gets up and leaves with the air of a man who's been putting quarters into the slot machine all night, only to see someone else get the payout the first time they pull the handle. <laughs> he really does, like, Come yeah. on, I've been loading that machine up all night. <laughs> <laughs> so right in the middle of the bar, though, she starts yelling, you're a terrorist, aren't you? Those were bombs at your house, weren't they? And he's like, it's me on the heiress day. Hello, fucking... Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, look, we've all been at the bar where this couple starts to have the fight. You want to do anything except hear what they have to say, right? You're just looking around the restaurant. Oh, there's sports on the TV. (laughs) And the thing is, like, she goes very big very quickly. And then he reacts to her bringing up his the bombs in basically the same way that I react to my wife starting an argument in public where he gets very quiet and says, come on, I mean, we don't we don't have to do this here. Can we yes. get home and talk about the bombs? We don't, all the people here don't need to know about the bombs. I know I know you're making a point, but let's make the point quietly and at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not telling you to shut up. I'm not telling you to shut up. That's I'm not what I said. T- I didn't say something. Like you can, you can continue I want to, to say it. I just I'm want you to say it a little bit Look, I understand that you're upset. I'm not minimizing how upset you are. You've got every right to be upset, but let's be upset in a place where everyone is not, we, nobody else needs to know that you're upset. We don't need to all be looking at how upset you are right now. <laughs> so yeah, so so he, eventually he drags her violently from the bar and everybody in the fucking bar is like, oh good. Like, I feel like I would really like for someone to follow them, but they, they don't. So they have a conversation. They have a screamy conversation. You know what goes great with screamy dialogue in a movie? A long echoey hallway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jesus. And their screamy conversation is about how they're doing criminal murder plans. And it's like, you've just walked out of the bar. You haven't walked into like a soundproof room. Like you could still be overheard as you admit <laughs> to murder plots. <laughs> You're way too public still. Right, yeah. You did not enter the cone of silence that you seem to be thinking <laughs> here. <laughs> also, just the tonal shift at this point, I was like, man, we're like two minutes from a splash fight montage in this movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's taking a turn. Right, and, well, and I love the line he pulls up here. He's like, well, I thought you said you wanted to help me. And she's like, not not murder people. Come on, that's not fair. And he's like, well, I don't, you know what? I don't think this is going to work out at all. And they both go their separate ways. <laughs> oh, God, those are the hardest breakups, right? Where, you know, it's just, it just doesn't work out because one of you is a terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's there's nothing. I mean, it's no one's fault. It's no one's fault. You just not yes, meant to be. Yes, of you know? course. It's, it's one of those no fault divorces. Yeah. Lack of compatibility. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So late that night, Bob Ross gets back to his hotel and he finds Shelley drunkenly singing to herself in the darkened lobby. Right? How's she drunk again? Because she was sober. She was drunk. Paula turns up. She was sober for the duration of their argument about terrorism and murder. And now she's passed out drunk again. Right. It's just how did she go back to the bar? What happened here? We don't know. <laughs> and this is another scene, I think, that plays a little differently in 2022 than it was intended to in 1979. Right. Because what we're supposed to be finding out here is that he's a good guy. And when he comes across this drunk lady in the in the lobby, he gives her a safe place to stay. But what it feels like is he's just found himself a great opportunity, right? Like, that's how this oh, plays. sure does. 100%. 100%. Mm. First thing he does is take the blanket off her. Yes. Which I don't think you need to do that immediately. <laughs> and then as he lifts it up, he's just... He is a very, very touchy man with this catatonically drunk lady. Like, at one point, he's behind her spooning her... Yes! ...for no real reason while they're standing up. 
Right. Oh, do you need something to lay, lean upon? How about my pelvis? Yes. Yes. So much touch. Such an uncomfortable amount. And again, this is the good guy is just like, all right, well, I guess I have to grab you by your tits and fling you over my shoulder <laughs> like, a, like a bag of animal feed because there's no other way to get you to safety and comfort. Let me push you forward with my penis. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like every meat cute in this film is like a PSA about being wary of strange men while on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> like, where is the sinister music when you need it? We had sinister Amen. music before. Where did that violin go? Right. So, yeah, but but she passes out in his arms, and we cut to the next morning. He's sitting around reading his fucking Bible or some <laughs> shit. Now, is this your best worst reading the Bible montage? Oh, no, absolutely not. Okay. No, yeah, I thought I knew which one it was, but I did enjoy this one because he's turning the pages way too quick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he's trying to remember where he was. No, I saw that bit. Jericho? No, I was way later than Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, What's this thing about donkeys? No, I saw the thing about yeah, donkeys. No, I yeah. remember. You don't forget that after you say <laughs> Okay, and then we cut to her waking up. She's on a goddamn waterbed. Oh, I did not spot that. <laughs> he put the pass out drunk ass woman on a fucking waterbed. <laughs> for the uh, younger members of our audience, waterbeds were around for about four years between 1970 and 1975. They were like if a bed was a punishment. Or at least a challenge. Oh, waterbeds were the fucking best. <laughs> it's like you're going to bed. It's going to be a challenge to get back up again. Yes, exactly. You right. Yeah, Once you're in there. Sure. You're in there. Yeah. So, yeah, no, but, but, hey, yeah, nothing better for a fucking hangover. Let me tell you, uh, <laughs> my waterbed experience. But, yeah, so she wakes up. He's, he's in there, uh, banging pots around making breakfast. Oh, God, he could not be any more passive aggressive with the banging of the pots. Like, it's so clear that he wanted her to have woken up by now. So he's just like making noise in the kitchen. So he wakes up. Oh, so did I wake you? Right. right yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but at least you're out of bed now. Could you get the fuck out of here? Yeah, I yeah. have shit to do today. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's making breakfast. She comes out. She's like, do you can you tell me where my purse is? And she, he's like, it is at the end of your arm. <laughs> <laughs> She's holding it at the time, basically. <laughs> it's so comically near her. It's fucking hilarious. So wait, where's we do? Well, you're looking at it. So, yep, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. So she goes back in and, and, and gets cleaned up, I guess. She has apparently a woke up in some strange man's room emergency kit in her purse. Oh, she's got a go bag. Absolutely. Yeah, she apparently just needs to brush her hair after a full-on alcoholic blackout. Yes. Uh, yeah, she combed the hangover right out of her. Is this where she says to him, do I know you? Yes. And he says, sort of, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Which is a fucking sinister response. Like, yeah, yeah, you sort of know me. Um, let me let me tell you about a little thing called GHB. You're going to laugh about oh, it. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> yeah, if someone wakes up in your apartment and you go, it depends on what you mean by knowing me. They... <laughs> As, especially if they're holding a Bible at the time, yeah. yeah Absolutely, yeah, they, yeah. That person jerked off in your shampoo. Do not take a shower <laughs> in that apartment. Also, small thing, but I noticed he's got a guitar in the back. I'm like, yeah, fucking course he does. <laughs> oh, God, no. I noticed that. I was like, look, he's a missionary. He's got a visible guitar case behind him. Run, lady, you are one plate of scrambled eggs away from him singing Come By Art. Get the <laughs> fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> right and this is where she's like oh you're that fucking missionary that tried to give me a spanish bible after i told you i didn't speak spanish <laughs> but he's got this great line too where he's like so do you always get passed out blackout fucking drunk at hotels is that your thing or what? <laughs> a bit, bit judgy bit judgy but yes <laughs> a little bit is this where she says to him like because she suddenly starts talking about paolo as if he knows who fucking paolo is and she says paolo feels like you're pushing religion onto a lot of people who don't need it and like they don't, because no. <laughs> at this point in the 70s, Puerto Rico was already pretty religious and had been for like a century at least. So st statistically speaking, you are wasting your time here, missionary. They're already right. on board with the Jesus thing. Exactly. Even if there was such a thing as needing religion, these people wouldn't fit that bill. But no. that's the thing, though. So let's take a second to appreciate what's actually happening, who he really is, right? Because when missionaries come from the U.S. to anywhere in Latin America, it's because they're trying to de-Catholicize those people, oh. right? They're not trying to turn them into Christians. They're trying to turn them into Protestants. 
Right. Which, keep in mind, at this point in history is like being like, oh, you guys are drinking Coke Zero? Oh, no, 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 no. Straight up Coca-Cola only, my friends. Let me tell you. Right. Oh, I didn't realize that. I grew up Catholic, and I just assumed that nobody would ever want to try and change people from Catholic <laughs> down a few levels into Protestant. Like, once you're Catholic, <laughs> you've achieved peak Christianity. Everything else is downwards from there. Protestants are people who haven't got the balls to be Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're going to get emails. Um, yeah, mostly from Northern Ireland, I think. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, as long as they're just emails, I'm happy. Yeah, right, right. No, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the letters ticking. you it's don't open. Ticking. If you get a letter, print them, do not open the, yeah. letter, the envelopes, no. <laughs> not, not everyone needs to write into our P.O. box, okay, no. everybody? Yeah, so. It's fine. They normally phone ahead. They always phone ahead. <laughs> the in fact, the weird thing is, Psychics in Ireland were way better in the 70s because they'd always say, like, I think a bomb's going to blow up like tomorrow in a certain place. And it always did. But I don't know what happened to the Irish psychic industry that it really <laughs> dropped off a cliff in the last 30 years. So, I think a few of them got <laughs> dropped off cliffs. That's what happened. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> so, all right. So, so anyway, so they're arguing about the necessity of missionaries in Puerto Rico. Right. She's like, are you trying to ruin people's lives with your religious bullshit? He's like, no, I'm trying to subjugate them so that other <laughs> people can ruin their lives. This is just a byproduct of what we do. And just to be clear, he sits on the stool in one of those cool pasta kind of ways. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it was possible to sit backwards on a stool, on a circular <laughs> stool. Somehow he's sitting backwards on it. It's impressive. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and then we have that, that cool pastor moment where she's like, you know what? When I was a kid, church used to bore the heck out of me. And he's like, yeah, me too. And she's like, oh, really? So you must really understand my problems and, and, and be able to talk to me on my level. He's like, I sure can. Sure can. I'm hip with the kids, let me tell you. <laughs> and he gives that stupid fucking line that religious people always give about like, well, I realized eventually that it wasn't the religion that was bad. It was the people that kept getting in the way of it. And I'm like, well, since you're not a people, I guess that'll be fine then. <laughs> right. Like, that's the only fucking way you can get it. It's weird that your perfect morality keeps turning out bad people, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, she yeah, she kind of points out like, well, you know, if Christianity helped people with their lives, I feel like. The Dark Ages would have rocked, right? That would have been a great time to be alive. There was lots of record keeping, okay? There was lots of record keeping for your <laughs> so, information. What, you don't like illuminated manuscripts? Well, of course, what he'd really say there is, well, they were Catholic, you see, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't talk to me about them. So, yeah, but then, so she thanks him for not raping her. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, it's just the least I could do. And it's like, it is, though. It really is. It's not just the least, super the least you could do. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and then he's like, hey, do you want to run errands with me? And she's, and she's like, do I? Oh, God. And I thought, fuck, we're not going to get a montage of these two now, are we? This is going to be interminable. <laughs> but actually, but then I thought, you know what? It'd be great if we did. And it'd be great if their montage was him being nice to the white folk, but then fucking over the locals. Just like a nice little <laughs> kind of... Mirror of Paolo there. <laughs> he pays for his dinner at the restaurant, but then he just kicks that kid's apple cord over. Yeah, Fucking savage. 100%. <laughs> it's bad because she's drawing comparisons between Paolo and this missionary Jay, and it could not be clearer how much I'm on team terrorism by this point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel bad how on team terrorism I am throughout this film. Yeah, I found it surprising. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Live for at least a week with the amount of subjugation to royalty that we've had to have and you'll suddenly start learning how to make uh, suitcase bombs. Honestly, it's, it'll seem way more appealing to you. So the queue has gotten to us all in a certain way. <laughs> so they go out to run errands together. They have this weird scene as they're leaving the hotel where he's like, remember you were drunk? Like really drunk right there? And she's like, I do remember that just vaguely. I do. I was going through a really hard time and he was like, yeah. Yeah. What? Why would they need that scene in? Nothing is served by having that scene in. So, to establish why he found her. Oh, yeah, I live above where you were. It's so strange. Don't put this scene in. Well, you know, hey, look, in a, in, in a movie that can dedicate 48 seconds to them eating lasagna, I feel like we had time for this scene. But, yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so they head out to the print shop. He's got some Jesus flyers to come in. There's one of those great moments where they're trying to pretend they were having a conversation, like we're catching the end of it or whatever, and they hadn't thought it through. Or <laughs> so yes, I almost went with best worst ending of a conversation because she's like, and then I said to her, "Fuck no, that was a that was a setup for it. I am 
And I said, how far away is the moon? And he said, what, do you mean from Missouri or Mississippi? <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a witchy bon mo. <laughs> oh. What? Yeah. So, but and wouldn't you know it, just as they're there for the uh, Jesus flyers, Paolo is showing up for some terrorism flyers. Awkward. Oh. Yeah. His terrorism flyer is called Liberty and Justice Through Rebellion and Revolution, which is a bit of an on the nose title. I yeah. mean, come on. Put some artistry <laughs> Sounds- into that. <laughs> Yeah. Also, hey, can we just commend the neutrality of this print shop? Just like, I print for everybody here at Tony's Prints. I print for the terrorists. I print for the Catholic colonizers. I print for everybody. <laughs> Protestant colonizers, I'll tell you, man. Come on. So, yeah. So, the the two of them start telling each other off, right? Paulo starts yelling at Jay, the Bob Ross character, for all his missionary colonialism. And then Jay's like, oh, yeah? Well, you terrorist with bombs. But he says, Paolo, you're a terrorist. How does he know Paolo's name at this point? <laughs> Has, how, Paolo doesn't seem bothered by the fact he knows him, but d- does everyone know Paolo? Because that seems like a really yeah. bad thing to be, like a high-profile local terrorist. <laughs> seems like True. a tricky, tricky job description. Yeah. There's a great moment here where Paolo throws down all of Jay's pamphlets and shit, and he goes, he says, and I quote, I spit on your religion and your books. And I, I'm just if we had like an opening argument style intro, I would have grabbed that clip for it. Okay. Oh, I spit on your. Yes. Two votes. But at which point Jay says, have you ever read it? Which, to be fair, is a very bold gambit, given how few Christians have actually read the book. <laughs> right. It, yeah, I have read it. What do you think about this bit? Oh, shit. No, uh, abort, abort. Uh, hold, uh, pull the ripcord. Get out. Get out. <laughs> red button. I'm like, I have Paolo. Save yourself time. You can just listen to Bible Peace Theater. It's way better. Okay. (laughs) Also, I just have to point this out. When Paolo rips up his pamphlets, he at first is holding the full stack and does like a (laughs) yes, yes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And then throws it down and has just one. And he's like, yeah, (laughs) now you can only give 99. So he does that to Jay's pamphlet, and I really wanted to like Jay as, as a as a response to grab one of Paolo's bombs and like tear that in half. Like, yeah, we'll <laughs> tear this. Bomb. All right, all right. I too can play at that game. This clock only goes up to six now. So <laughs> <laughs> just, just make sure you bomb people in the first half and half of the hour. <laughs> so yeah, and then Jay gives him this weird challenge. Right, he's like, I think if you were a real terrorist, you would read the Bible and see what you were against. And he's like, that doesn't. Oh, fine. Fine. Paolo just is like, you know what, Phil, in this conversation, yes, I'll read the goddamn Bible. I'm like, don't do it, man. That's a great point. That's a great point you've just made. I'll read one of the longest, most boring books in English history because you were like, nuh uh. Yep. <laughs> I wish that worked for other books, right? I know that happens all the time in the Christian movies review, but I wish I could just be like, oh, and you haven't even read Proust's three book series on a memory, on a rumination of one's own sexuality and the relationships that represents. And everyone was just like, fine, fine. And then Mont, I don't want to wait. So yeah, so, but Paolo's like, you know what? I'll read your stupid Jesus book, but you have to stay away from my people. Right. And I thought, yeah, I bet Jay's the first one to break that deal. Yes! I bet Paolo reads the book, but Jay doesn't shut the fuck up about Jesus around town. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Once again, Team Paolo here, Team Terrorist. 100%. So, okay. Sharp dresser as well. Sharp oh, dresser. Absolutely. We've seen several of his outfits. They're sharp. <laughs> so, so <laughs> Paolo storms off. Shelly follows him, right? They have to continue to have their yelly fight from the night before. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that they have this fight over a perfectly placed corner of a fence, like a metal fence, like a railing, where they're both leaning directly at the camera. It's like, wow, they, I'm so glad you found exactly the right yeah. spot to be leaning together <laughs> in this unnatural pose. That's just perfect for the camera. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Because you know how when you're yelling at somebody, you're very often both looking in the same direction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and so, you know, he wanders off and she yells back, you know, you'll never be truly free, Paolo. And I'm like, well, I mean, that's true because the U.S. has never reckoned with its ongoing colonialism, but I don't see why that's a point in your favor. I, I don't think like, that's what she means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Apparently, she means that he'll never be free without Jesus. But like, the argument here is that the white American knows what's best for your country, yes. Paolo from Puerto Rico. Yeah. That's the the premise of the fucking movie. Yeah. That you want to be free? How about being free to do what this white American lady says? (laughs) That's free. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So, yeah. 
So then he wanders off. We cut to him in his terrorist cell, taking some pictures and scoping out the possible targets for their next big round of bombs. Oh, yeah. And this is the photos in front of places where they're all taking souvenir photos of them as a group in front of their bombing target, just in case the police need to need some evidence after the fact. Like, here I am in right. front of uh, explosion number one. Oh, there's, there's the four of us. <laughs> and they're also scoping out. I realized after the fact why this made sense. But initially, I saw them scoping out various different bins to bomb. And I thought, okay, yeah, you're going to bring freedom to this country by crippling the refuse collection infrastructure this seems like a long con <laughs> it's a very long game going on i love the conversation here too because like the girl that's in the terrorist cell is like mm, we sure are gonna kill a lot of innocent people huh paulo huh you love killing innocent <laughs> people right still and i love that like we're supposed to know he's changed because his heart isn't in the civilian murder anymore yes yes right but i wanted him to be like okay no wait Here's the thing. We don't need to kill people. All we need to do is blow up this, this town center at a time when there's not going to be many people around. So let's change the bombs to be at like 11 PM. Let's phone in ahead of time to make sure there's an evacuation. We can make our point without killing people. And then I thought, Oh shit, I'm really on the side of the terrorists here. I am really <laughs> weird. Why am I the ideas guy for their terrorist right, cell? Yeah, exactly. This is not good. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, podcast listener. A bunch of Marcia's notes this week are just terrorism and destruction. <laughs> Absolutely are. He's got some <laughs> blueprints in here. It's really scary <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but they all wander off. He sits, he sticks around for a little while and watches all the unmurdered kids walking through the square. Yeah. The rest of my notes of this scene is just a recipe for napalm. I don't even know why yes. I put this in here. <laughs> Oh, but when I do it on Skeptocrat, we got to have a big company meeting about it. <laughs> Hate being the new guy. Oh, there'll be a big company meeting on on this one, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so he goes to his thinking spot, right? And we watch it. <laughs> we watch a thinking montage. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he throws some rocks and he's like, mm, looking at the surf. Guys, I'm thinking like thinking is not a visual here! <laughs> me, 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 Sorry, me. are you physically straining at how hard you're thinking? <laughs> and then he, he curls up and falls asleep in his burned out ruin of a church, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I guess that burned out church is our taking a break spot because we're going to do that again. But first, let me give back to the hard sell. Will we watch people eat again? Will there be a three minute scene of someone trimming their nails? Could they not find anything worth pointing a fucking camera at on that entire beautiful tropical island? Find out the answers to these questions or whatever else they have when we return for the harrowing-ish conclusion of Crossfire. Hey, Marsh, what's the problem? Yeah, you texted us to meet you in the kitchen? Yeah, I sure did. It's it's that mailbox thing that you guys order. It's it's all wrong. You mean HelloFresh? Yeah, but with HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Well, you know, that might be, but these recipes, they're just all wrong. I mean, look at this one. Look at this one. They don't have you boiling this carrot at all. Not at all. Well, that, that's because it's in a salad, Marsh. What's a salad? Right. British. Well, HelloFresh has meals covered with a weekly selection of 30 plus recipes and 70 plus convenience items, all delivered to your door, from gourmet meals to kid friendly baking kits. Right, baking, finally. So, what meat pies are they, are they going to be doing? Meat pies? Well, what other kind of bacon is there? Okay. Plus, HelloFresh works for your schedule. Plans are flexible and you can change your meal preferences, update your delivery day, and even change your address with just a few taps on the HelloFresh app. It's true. HelloFresh sent us a box to try and their meal variety was incredible, even though the recipes were easy and fun to make. That's why I know Illusions personally endorse HelloFresh. And right now, you can go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful65 and use code Awful65 for 65% off plus free shipping. So wait, you're saying I can go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful65 and use the code Awful65 for 65% off plus free shipping? That's right. All right, guys, I'm sold. So now the question is, do you think they're going to accept these corrections that I've made to their recipes? Uh, let me see those. More boiling, less spices. Uh, I, I don't know, Marsh. But it's what the queen would have wanted. Well, now that I believe, yeah. Yeah. 
and then you'll plant this bomb right here. Perfect. And then the destruction will be maximal. <laughs> <laughs> knock, knock. Roberto, finally. You're, wait, what? Sorry, who the hell is this? Oh, uh, this is Tiffany. Uh, she and I are dating. Hi. Oh, uh, uh, it's very nice to meet you, Tiffany. Uh, Roberto, we're kind of, we're, we're going to be talking about that thing today. So I, I don't know if this would be the best time. No, guys, guys, it's fine. She knows I'm a terrorist. Totally. She knows you're a terrorist. Yes, Alan, she does. Relationships are about honesty. Cool, cool. Uh, so you just, you told a random girl about our terrorist cell and now she, she's what? She's joining? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. We were just thinking, you know, we would like check it out together and see if this is something we wanted to do like as a couple. Check it out. Look, it's not a fucking sorority here. Okay, actually... Dave, Tiffany's in a sorority and they're really hard to get into. That's true, they are. Wait, she's in college? Come on, man. She's an old soul. Old soul, great. Can her body just have a beer yet or just her soul? Okay, wow, I didn't realize you guys were such sexist. No, this is really no, interesting. No, absolutely not. This is about you. No, you guys have been gross about Tiffany since you met her and it's because she's a woman. It's very obvious. Well, I actually think her soul is the woman. Her body still appears to be a teenager. Mm -hmm. Sexism. Sexism and ageism. You know what? Fine. Tiffany, you're in. What terrorist ideas do you have? What do you want to blow up? Go on, baby. Tell him, tell him your ideas we were talking about in the car. So, like, what if you guys did terrorism? Nice! See, what if we did terrorism? I, I quit the terrorism. Oh, I, I wish I was a suicide bomber. I get that a lot. She does. She does get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open this scene on some of the leftover bomb prep footage from the intro, I guess. Yeah. Never did I think we would miss the swiftness of the bomb prep at the beginning <laughs> of the movie. But this is obviously the B-roll, right? It was yeah. just like, come on, man. <laughs> you have some extra... Yeah, so we, we see that, and then we see one of the terrorists is out dropping those bombs into trash cans. Ooh. So meanwhile, Paolo wakes up in his burned-out husk of a church, and he's got the Jesus pamphlets that he tore up from before. He's got those littered around him, which means he tore that shit up and then put it in his pocket to dispose of it later. <laughs> he did, yeah. Which I guess makes sense because he, did, he didn't want to put it in the bin because he knows he's going to blow all the bins up. So he's like, no, I don't want to put it there because I'll just get redistributed later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then it rains Jesus pamphlets <laughs> right, all over the yeah. city. That's the opposite of what I want. Yeah. But so then we get my best worst, right? We get him reading the pamphlet that he's torn up. <laughs> Now, they're going to have him, like, read a section and then look around for the next section. But that's not how reading a torn up thing would work. No. <laughs> Unless it was turned into horizontal strips, right? So he would yeah. have to have two or three sections together at least. But, yeah. It's also, it's one of those shitty pamphlets, right? It's not like the, like, we mean it. Please read the Bible. It's just like, here, obligation fulfilled. Now I'm a done teenager or whatever. So he's holding it. It's just so tiny in his hands. Oh, it's God, so yeah. t he's just like trying to piece together this chick tract like he's doing surgery <laughs> on a grape. Yeah. <laughs> but also because he's not going to be able to find it in the right order. I thought, is he going to read this whole Jesus book in like a cut up order like he's fucking William S. Burroughs? <laughs> right, yes. so yeah, I, I just think we get some some deeper truths from it if we read it in like a randomly distributed order, you know, we, we learn some some other sort of uh, it's it's all about the the narrative of spontaneous creation rather than int <laughs> authorial intention. You know, that's what I'm all there about. You go. There you go. I also really wanted one of the seagulls that was nearby to have stolen like a crucial bit of his Bible. <laughs> like, like the bit where Jesus dies. None shall get to the heaven through the Father but by. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like he's going through and he's like, so Jesus did the miracles <laughs> and then he was worshipped by people and... um well, I, would get, I guess that was it. I guess nothing bad happened from then on in. <laughs> um, this Jesus guy <laughs> seems pretty cool. I gotta find... I guess he's still in Israel, he right? I still be around somewhere. <laughs> Son of God probably has magic powers. And also, they're trying to create suspense with a parallel edit here, except for on one side of the parallel edit, there's a guy reading, 
And on the other side, there's a woman packing, right? Shelly yes. is, I guess her vacation is coming to a close now. <laughs> her indeterminate length holiday seems yeah. to be done. Who knows? Yeah. Right. And it, this is where I discovered my best worst, that this movie was identical on 1.5 speed. The only difference is that the funky saxophone music is too fast. So it's like, <laughs> but that is the only difference. So, yeah, and of course, this is all being interspersed with them planting more bombs. That's supposed to do all of the the work, the heavy lifting in terms of suspense, right? But the sound on them planting the bombs is undercut by the sound of the bomb ticking, which makes it sound like the clocks are so loud. Like, why would you get a clock that ticked that loud if you're putting bombs in a public place? Someone is definitely going to favor a quieter clock. You can use any <laughs> clock. It's absolutely fine. You'd think. You would think, yeah. So yeah, so all three bombs get planted and then Shelly goes out onto the balcony at her hotel and talks to God. Oh. <laughs> and, so, and she says, she's like, God, I don't, haven't talked to you in a while, but it's act three now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my notes. I would love to hear what she thinks her problem is, right? Because she seems to be like more in the what do I do about my boy problems and not there are three active bombs in the movie at this point. Yes. yes. And also she's like, you know, I've got a problem. I thought, is her problem the ongoing oppression of the Puerto Rican people? Oh, no, it's not. That's not who right. her problem is. She doesn't see that as a problem at all. Not at all. Yeah. So and and so she's like, God, something awful is going to happen if you don't step in. And God's like, oh, so what? It's Tuesday. I, are you fucking kidding me? That's always the case. <laughs> always. This is also where she asked God, you know, if you don't do it for the people, do it for Paolo, which is a bit like, you know, if you don't do it for the terrorist victims, at least do it for the terrorists. For the right terrorists. The wrong yeah. way around. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Hold on a second, lady. So, OK. So but eventually... Paolo finishes his Jesus pamphlet, or as Eli has it written in the notes, plamphet. Mm, plamphet. I, I want to be called a plamphet from now on. I'm with you. <laughs> so, but he finishes his plamphet and he stares out into the water with an all new result. He crosses himself. Apparently, they went over how that's done in the, in the pamphlet. pamphlet. They must have, yeah. <laughs> and to find the diagram. And now he prays, right? Everybody's talking to God now. He says to God, he's like, you know, I didn't know that it was true, but then I was convinced by the beauty of the language of the Bible. And I'm like, oh, you're a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a fictional movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also he he says, I was never taught to read the Bible. And I'm like, you read the, this morning? That was what the, they that torn up thing was the Bible. Yeah, an afternoon of reading several excerpts, very much a kind of an abridged version, you know, the Ladybird book of the Bible. <laughs> that was enough to turn completely from a terrorist into a Christian. Oh, apparently. You got the Bible Cliff's notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that must have been I get it. the gist. <laughs> so yeah, so he's talking to God. Meanwhile, Shelly is driving out to the terrorism house to see if he's there and she can talk some sense into him. <laughs> and she walks in, the girl terrorist comes out as she's coming in. And she's like, where's Paolo? And she says, he's not here. And then Shelly yells, Paolo. And I'm like, she just said he's not fucking there, man. She said mm. he's not there. This is why everyone hates you at our terrorist clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I love how she tries to talk the terrorists out of terrorism by saying, look, like I, I get it, right? You guys want to kill people. And, and I'm totally on board with that. But, you know, how about don't? Right. Has that done it? Has that done, that's done it, right? I've, I've got it, yeah. Let me white splain murder to you real mm. quick. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this is where she realized, she's like, look, I know that you guys are terrorists and you're about to kill a whole bunch of random people. What, what are you guys getting all upset about? What's the matter? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you all slowly walking towards me? Really? She, she didn't think people might be slightly miffed that she knows they're a terror cell? <laughs> so... <laughs> Then we get this incredible chase scene. I have to imagine this was like not planned because she goes to run away and immediately falls down. 
right? Yeah. Immediately, oh, yeah. she stumbles over her own fucking feet and falls down. Everybody else falls down. She somehow still gets away. It's to borrow an analogy from Eli. It's like they're prolonging a game of chase with a toddler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she her, Everyone gets a bad case of horror movie running yeah. throughout the rest of this movie. Also, fun fact, if you watch the rest of this movie at 1.5 speed, it is a lot of wacky shenanigans instead of dramatic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God, yeah. 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 Absolutely Benny Hill. Yeah. Chaplin-esque, yeah. A legion of like 60s ladies come on in their underwear. They chase her around. She chases <laughs> them around. They chase each other through different doors. Yeah, absolutely. The so, bomb chases someone around. Yeah. <laughs> so, she, so she gets into her car and her car won't start because, you know, because it's suspense. And so one of the terrorist guys start, decides, oh, I'm going to break this window with this rock. But he's it takes a lot of tries. It's so long. Everyone hits her windows at once with rocks, and every single one of those windows like withstands at least five hits. I thought, yeah. wow, what model of car is she driving? It's extremely shock resistant. <laughs> this is basically an though. advert for that model. It's incredible. <laughs> It takes so, it's hilariously long, right? Because we've all seen this scene in a horror movie, right? But it's like, imagine Jason getting a little bit winded and like readjusting the mask. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we watch happen. Wait, there's a pebble in my fucking shoe. And you know, it doesn't, it's not going to look big when I take it out, but it feels big right now. So yeah, so, but she, her car starts just as he breaks the window. She drives off. They all run back and get in their truck, which starts on the first try, luckily, and chase her. Yeah, they're going to chase her on an open bed flat truck. Yes. <laughs> so, and of course, she went to the, well, if I was getting chased, I would probably move the steering wheel a lot school of mime driving. <laughs> <laughs> just once in one of these movies, I want someone to be driving like that and for it to pan out and they're just terribly weaving across yes, the road for right, no reason. Yeah, exactly. that, no wonder they caught her up. She had a 50 second head start, but she was taking like three times as long to get anywhere because she's weaving so far <laughs> across the road. Yeah, serpentining, yeah. Well, also, and they're trying to make this seem like a chase scene, but they're like very obviously going like 16 miles an hour, right? Like we can see the trees going by, but she gets stuck into a ditch. Actually, she she lowers her car into a ditch like they couldn't afford to dent it. <laughs> very clearly someone's car. And they were like, if you fucking mess up my car, I'm going to kill. All, I'll kill all of you for real. No fake terrorist bonds. So she just like, she might as well back in. She might as well parallel park. Into a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, and apparently she's, she's driving on this like fucking cow path. That's right next to a real road that she could be driving. on. Drive on the road. Get on the road and drive on the road. <laughs> what is wrong with you? There's, I mean, there's a weak ass little fence between the two things, but I feel like, you know, life's in danger kind of, you just drive through the little fence, no? She pulls over, starts to drive around in circles on a high school track. I have to get away. Okay, you just. <laughs> <laughs> but so her car gets stuck. She jumps out and it just so happens that there's a truck driving by at running speed, at, you know, jogging speed yeah. on the real road and she catches up with it, but the, the bad guy terrorists can't for some reason yeah they had a pro-nationalist truck of guys I guess. <laughs> <waiting. Yes. laughs> guys who are very accommodating to a random stranger running to jump on the back of their truck i think most people if you're sat on an open bed truck like that if someone else tries to run and jump on you're like um no we're, we're going somewhere who are you no thank you but they are very relaxed about the whole thing Lo siendo. <laughs> so yeah, so but she, she she gets away with them, and then we cut to her on a payphone. She's calling Jay's hotel now, right? Mm-hmm. She says, "Jay, I need you to come pick me up." And I'm like, "Maybe you tell him that there are terrorists chasing you. Maybe you just don't surprise him with that fact later after he's already agreed to do it." Now, no, I, I'm so sorry. I hate to correct you on air, but what she actually says is, "Hi, Jay. Sorry, one second. I got to leave screen that they're going to keep the movie going." Yeah. <laughs> Yes, right. Hi, Jay. It's me. Sorry, I'm back now. <laughs> oh, God. She like leans backwards out of the scene so we can see that the terrorist on the road. But she's in a phone booth. So she leans backwards out of the phone booth into the open air where she's totally visible by like to the terrorists in order to continue talking to, J- to Jay. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. At this point, it's really clear the terrorists are going to see who she is and where she is. She's a blonde girl from Missouri kind of sticks right out in Puerto Rico, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Right. But 
she sneaks away and then sneaks back and she's like, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, I need you to pick me up from such and such a place. And then we cut to him picking her up from such and such a place. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like, my, my notes are, well, th- this has been uneventful. <laughs> yeah. So, so that happens then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. This is the most boring movie with three bombs I've seen in a very long time. Right? <laughs> So she's like, quick, we have to go out to Paolo's thinking spot. There's a terrorist plot underway. And he doesn't question that. She's like, they've set up some bombs. Let's find Paolo. And he's like, no questions from me. Yep. Tire screech. That's Absolutely. Go. Obviously, that's what we would then do. Yeah. So they get to the they get to the thinking spot. And she's like, here, you wait in the truck. There's not really enough room for three people's worth of dialogue. And he goes, oh, OK. All right. I'll wait. <laughs> it's fine. What do you think he's doing in the truck? Like I was, re- I, their scene is so boring. I really wanted it to cut to him, and he's just like, doo, 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 doo. oh yeah. I wonder where the bombs are. Doo, he's definitely pushing. skipping through the radio to find like a nice. No, not that one. Not that one. Doo, 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 doo. Oh, it's the same song again. Skip, oh, skip, so skip. Weird, it's so that weird. thing where the stations like it's on two different FM things, but they're quite close together. So you skip yeah, once, and then you sure. get the same. Yeah, it happens. It happens. <laughs> So yeah, so she runs up to Paolo and she's like, Paolo, Paolo, please unbomb those places. And he's like, I found Jesus. I'm I'm on your side now. And she's like, that's convenient because otherwise there was no fucking point in this scene. (laughs) Yeah. She also has a moment where she's like, oh, interesting. You've changed your faith. Well, let me tell you, I'm in absolutely no rush. I would love to hear about that. (laughs) Right, right. So, okay. So then we cut to a very literal ticking clock. To remind us of the stakes of the movie, right? <laughs> this is where I wrote a big dissertation on how much quieter the the clock could be, but Marsh already got to it before me, so we'll, <laughs> we'll move on. Thing is, we're also seeing this clock ticking down. It's like, oh god, no! So this is like really intense stakes. And at that point, we're watching like Paolo climb down and then do like a full two hundred meters like jog to the car. It, yes, cut straight to him being in the car. We don't need to watch him jog two hundred <laughs> meters across <laughs> the palm tree laden grass. Does that thing where he thinks he's going to be able to be in the front and then he's like, "Oh no, you take the oh no, I'm no, no, just in the back." And then the child locks on. It's a bit harder to open the door. Oh, sorry, I've got to do the central locking <laughs> thing. Oh, oh, no, you stop. pulled the handle. Stop just pulling press the, the handle. Stop. Okay, <laughs> stop pulling it. <laughs> So, okay, so they all get in the car, and, and I guess Paolo and Jay are friends now. They're fine. But I love this passive aggressive moment where Paolo puts his arm around Shelly, right? Just to make it clear. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I still, I dibs. I had dibs. I do give the girl, though. Right. Yeah. Also, credit where credit is due. We have seen the like, oh, I've been saved by Jesus, blah, 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 blah conversation a bunch of times. This is the first time we've seen it mid bomb diffusing rain. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? There's there's a certain intensity to like, and I never realized before that a person as bad as me could actually be loved by Jesus. Well, that's the whole point. Is that Jesus loves all of us. He sacrificed his life for you. <laughs> he goes about this Jesus of yours. How does one go about receiving him? I'm like, well, that's the money shot of Christian porn right there. And then oh, that uh, question right there. Absolutely. Because that, that how about this G's of yours felt like a badly translated comedy club MC. And then how do you go about <laughs> receiving him sound like a badly translated porn equivalent of that comedy club MC. 100%. 100%. <laughs> So, and at this point, the camera cuts the clock as if to critique the dialogue for wasting time. Yeah, like, right. Come on, guys. Like, stop talking about this. this. There's a bomb to get to. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so they, they pull up at the uh, plaza and Paolo leaps out and grabs the bomb out of the first trash can. <laughs> then we cut to the bad guys. I guess they're on a rooftop watching their bombs with binoculars. Right. Yeah, but like in a very disinterested way. They don't. They don't seem very invested in their bombs going off. It's like, oh, isn't that Paolo over there? Oh, I guess that's Paolo. I remember Paolo. It's like, guys, have some kind of urgency. This is your. This is the freedom of your country. You're fighting for here. <laughs> well, and also like this never matters, right? Because they never catch up with Paolo. We never see them again, right? Like the. No. Why even have them there? No, and, and so why have them deliver this in the jaded, world-weary approach to <laughs> suffering of the front row guillotine knitters in A Tale of Two City? <laughs> yeah. like, be more engaged. Yeah, uh, well, you know what it is? I'm sure they had like a big fight after the car chase scene, right? And you know when the office is all pretty awkward after someone gets yelled at for the rest of the day? That's what we're watching here is they're like, we all had a big yelly fight about the car chase earlier and I just want to get through the day and like, yeah, that's Paolo and he's taking all the bombs, but it's just, it's been a lot on my plate today, okay? (laughs) So, 
boundaries, work life balance. <laughs> so yeah, so the the bad guys run down to try to get him in time. And also speaking of shit that doesn't matter, so we also have this scene where the janitor has already taken the trash that had the third bomb and replaced it with an empty bag. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most desperate way that the movie stretches, right? Is they're sitting there looking at their 50 minute runtime and then they go, but the janitor's already taken the bomb out of the trash. So Paolo has to go across the plaza and be like, hey man, did you just take the trash? And he's like, I'm not allowed to tell you that. And he's like, you're not a mailman. Did you take the trash? And he's like, yeah, I took the trash. And he <laughs> yeah. takes he just the bomb gets out of there. The fucking bomb. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh my God, where's the bomb? It's not here. Is it there? Yes. Yes, it's oh, okay. right Fair fucking enough. there. <laughs> Good. All right. So, yeah, so, so he finds the bomb, and then he steals a taxi. Yes. They have a car. They have a car. They, they do have they a car. In a car. In a car. They're in that, that, that other car is still running. <laughs> <laughs> There's a driver in it. It's got a very GTA feel yet again. They're like, oh, I'm just going right. to jump in the You're first right. vehicle that I see. <laughs> And then, so he go, he steals a taxi, drives off, and then we see the janitor talking to the police and saying, like, I think you need to go follow that guy because he just stole a bag out of the trash. <laughs> right? You would have thought, you would assume that that was like, oh, fuck, I threw away that scarf by accident that we just bought or something. <laughs> Greg, Greg, what did I tell you about calling the police every time someone takes something out of the trash? <laughs> you got to stop calling us, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he starts driving off and and for reasons unbeknownst to any goddamn body jay's dumbass starts driving right behind him he's like oh there goes the bombs we should be near those huh <laughs> the dialogue line that we do not hear is follow that bomb right yeah absolutely yeah and also this 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 car chase weird car chase like with bombs in the car Drives over a bridge over some water. Yes. Which Paolo never thinks, oh, there's some water. I could throw the bombs into there and it won't blow me and my car up. He's like, no, no, no. Let's carry on straight past. Yeah. That. Fuck this yeah. taxi. <laughs> like he found Jesus and instantly lost all his common sense. Right? Yeah. Pa Paolo will drive past a series of increasingly convenient locations. He <laughs> might as well drive past like an explosives d detonation box and he's like, no, no, I think. <laughs> He's out in the middle of the woods for so much of this fucking shot. Yeah. He, he drives past the bomb disposal convention, like uh, yeah. uh, right. the International Bomb Disposal Expos convention, just looking for practical demonstrations. Yeah. <laughs> Speed championship starting in three. To, no, I'm looking for a field. I'm like, yeah, how big are these fucking bombs, dude? Also, I just have to point this out that in case you were thinking, hey, maybe there's some tension in the movie at this point. Don't worry. The Jimi Hendrix of Kitar is going to fucking work while all oh. this is happening. So it's like. <laughs> Chase music in the 70s couldn't be bad if it tried. My God. <laughs> So, yeah, so he's driving out into the, he's in the middle of the fucking jungle at this point. Jay and Shelly are following, and now a cop is following them, right? So we're endangering all kinds of people for no fucking reason. And then, so he finally gets out into this field, and he's going to, well, what what it said in the script is he run, he leaps from the car as the car's still moving. <laughs> and so, it is still, it's technically still moving. Yes. It is technically still moving. It's doing like three miles an hour. And as he jumps out the car, he accidentally overtakes it. But other than that, it is moving. <laughs> and then it immediately stops, right? Because it's, it's not like he's got a brick on the gas pedal. It just yes. immediately stops. I loved after. this. This is the only realistic jump out of the car while it's going scene I've ever seen in <laughs> <laughs> no! Oh, right, because the gas pedal keeps it yes. <laughs> going, and that's a hill. That I wanted the car to just slowly start to drop, fall backward. Oh, fuck. Okay, it's, I gotta run oh, it. I gotta put up, on the parking brake. I was brake. uphill. Shit. God damn it. Yeah, so, but he runs away. The bomb goes off right behind him. I'm like, oh, all the more reasons why you should have put it in any of those other places when you drove by the bomb disposal convention there. Yeah, 100%. But he gets knocked down in the blast. Don't worry. He'll be fine. Yeah, there's no jeopardy in that. He's just lying in a puddle. Yes. But, oh, no, he's 
He's wet. Oh, he's just oh, wet. He's soggy. fine. He's, 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 like, he's soggy. We... He'll dry. It's quite warm there. He'll be all right. <laughs> right. Jenny, Jenny, have a quick splash fight with me <laughs> to show that we're romantically reunited. <laughs> Did we all enjoy the fact that Jay runs up to try and save him and falls in the puddle as <laughs> yes. well, which has yes. to have been an accident that they left in. Has to. It can't have been anything else. Either that or Jay was just like, I don't, he doesn't get to be soaking wet if I don't get to be soaking wet. God damn. Right. Or Jay <laughs> thought it was a lake and he was going to do a, a, like a heroic rescue and he's like, no. Oh, it's just okay. <laughs> so, but like, there was more jeopardy in Jay's fall into the puddle than there was in Paolo's close escape from the bomb. Is that all about what if Jay's yeah, yeah. brain is right, shallow and- dives? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they they lift up Paolo, one of them with each arm or whatever, and they and then they walk him over to the cops and turn him in. <laughs> And that's the end of the movie. They walk him over to the cops. The cops arrest him for terrorism and everyone else lives happily ever after. The end. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I write in my notes. I'm like, wow, it seems like uh, from from Paolo's perspective, he should have just let those bombs go off. Huh? That would be a better, way, better, way better idea for him. All right. So and like I, I ask this an awful lot. Sometimes I just do it as a joke, but I'm genuinely curious. What was the moral of this fucking story? Uh, plant your bombs closer to your thinking spot. Oh, nice. All right. That makes sense. I mean, I went with that I'm w- clearly way more sympathetic to terrorism than Eli is, possibly as a result of spending an entire week watching hospital appointments for cancer surgery Jesus and vital Christ. public services canceled out of respect of a dead lady who thought she was better than us. <laughs> Eat the rich. Burn it all down. Where are the bombs? Give me a suitcase. Okay, now you've proposed a great idea. What if everyone got to take a little bite of the queen? It's like, well, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm on board. I'm on board. Yeah, right, right. All right. Well, Marsh, thanks so much for joining us. And real quick, while we've got you here, if our listeners wanted to hear more from you, what conference should they attend? Oh, my God. You should all come to QED. You guys are coming to QED. You're doing a live show at QED, 28th to 30th of uh, October in Manchester. My favorite weekend of the skeptical calendar. I would say that if I wasn't even involved in running it, it's going to be so much fun. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people there. We've got like 12 different main stage speakers. We've got like loads of panels about really interesting things. Eli's going to do a panel about skeptical parenting and raising kids in a kind of progressive way and avoiding stereotypes and all that kind of nasty stuff. We've got live podcast recordings. We've got a quiz that Heath's going to be running. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be amazing. QEDcon.org. Oh, wow. Everybody has an extra thing they're doing but me. That's great. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Crossfire. And and Noah will be there, I too. I know. Noah will be there. there. He'll yeah. be the one crying in the lobby. <laughs> He'll be the one crying in the smokers area outside. Let's no, say. no, I quit smoking. I he quit doesn't smoke anymore. Yeah, I'm not talking about cigarettes. Oh, well, you're going to have a section for that? Fuck yeah. It's about goddamn <laughs> time. Legally, I can't stop you. I don't own the hotel. <laughs> All right. All right. You heard it, everybody. Bring your drugs to QED. That's what Marsh, Marsh wants to leave you with that message. Marsh legally can't stop you doing anything in a public area that is legal or not legal. It's not my responsibility. But, you know, don't do That's anything right. I wouldn't That's like. right. But hey. Yeah. Yeah. Let's 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 be honest though. Noah is telling you to bring your drugs to QED. I'm not going to fly them all the fucking way from the states. Come on, help me out here. All right, so that's going to do it for our review of Crossfire. But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to bang our heads against this wall again next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we'll be heading back for the fourth and I believe final movie made by the Happy Science Cult of Japan. Uh, This is their only live-action release. Oh, really? And it's called The Terrifying Revelations of Nostradamus. Oh, God. (laughs) Fuck this. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 370 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon owners that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among the ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation, and D&D Minus, and The Skeptic available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotman, Google Dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bostic, I'm an illusionist. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Puerto Rico still doesn't have meaningful access to democracy. So, you know, 
I guess God got what he wanted. <laughs> the intervening 43 years would vindicate the shit out of Paolo's cause. Chile would eventually leave both men for a guy who wasn't any kind of terrorist or oppressor. No shout. <laughs> Fucking good was Metroid Dread Morgan. God damn it, I like that game. Oh uh, no, easy mode. Easy mode for Eli's. <laughs> oh yeah, there's no easy mode on that, is there? There's no, no, they're just like, hey, here's our say. super fucking. You're gonna get killed by this fucking bird again. <laughs> yeah. It, oh, it was such a good game, though. Oh, it's so brilliantly created. It's just, I, I, such I, a good game. It, it, I had to watch a playthrough like a nine year old with ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Me and a bunch of kids whose parents don't love them <laughs> watching the playthrough. I just need to talk about it. Have you guys seen the TikTok? You guys don't watch TikTok, right? Neither no, of you? No. Okay. There's this guy on TikTok. He's an arm wrestler and he whisper, he like whisper coaches people while he arm wrestles them. And that young man does not know why I'm watching his videos. It makes me very happy. He's there. All of his videos are like, yeah, today I'm talking to Big Mike from Boston. Yeah, you're really strong, Big Mike. And I'm like, hey, you guys would throw up if you knew why I'm watching. I could ruin that motherfucker's year. <laughs> Just with some fan mail. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. No one will be as required, but with only oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, required for, for a joke, and I, and I couldn't carry on. Um, I'll do Optional that. Optional anal beans. Yeah. We need fire, we, right? We we lost Marsh. Oh, okay. I was thinking he had, he had not um, tuned in for a sec. Yeah, I was thinking we uh, we must have lost him. Either that, or he was mad. I'll stop it. I insulted his Taco Bell ordering. Oh, again. that's. <laughs> That's on me. God, why do I hurt the people I love the most? <laughs> so. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.